Hey, uh, welcome back. In the previous video of this Cell B series, we completed this board right here, which is, I think, the input board. And uh, that was the fourth board. In this video, we'll be assembling the memory expansion board. So let's uh, open up our manual here. And take a look at the assembly instructions. The assembly instructions, just like pretty much every single board in the Cell B computer, aside from maybe the CPU board, it's pretty basic. You uh, assemble or solder the ICs. In our case, we'll be doing the um, IC sockets. Resistors, diodes, capacitors, they're all pretty much all the same. And we have this uh, parts layout. I will take it out just so I could reference it while I'm assembling the board. I'm going to set it to the side here for a little bit. Uh, fuse clips and the fuse and, and final inspection and testing. In the back of the manual here, where we have the details for each uh, board of the computer, we have the uh, one for the expansion card, power requirements, to maximum 250 uh, milliamps, and a little bit of how the card works. Basically, it uh, it allows us to address uh, up to, I think, 16K uh, of memory. And the schematic for it, just a couple of latches, uh, and decoders, so these 7442 decoders. These are actually kind of hard to find um, from that time period. I found, I think I found some from that time period on eBay. These are from 1974, so yeah, they, these are pretty close. And uh, yeah, the schematic and the parts list. For the ICs, we'll actually be using these IC sockets, and uh, I, I used these in the previous videos for the previous cards. These are Pretty nice, I like them. Uh, there are nine 16-pin uh, sockets and one 14-pin socket. And I just had one of these pins fall out from one of these sockets. Let me see which one it was. It was this one right here. So let me just reinsert it in here without bending the pins too much. And I'll just set them aside for now because we won't be using them for the time being. And uh, there are actually a lot of resistors as well. In fact, there are 67, as we can see here. And they're all 10K ohm. I have them over there. This is probably going to be the, the most time-consuming part. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and you might notice that my fingernails have dirt under them. I've been working on the garden uh, recently, so apologies for that. So yeah, let me go ahead and get started with the uh, resistors. The resistors are installed now, but I also want to go ahead and install the diode, which is right over here. I have the 6.3 volt diode with me here, but uh, the the holes for the diode, they're a little larger than, for example, the resistors, but I don't think it's still able to support this diode that I have here, unfortunately. Uh, it might support some other diodes, but not this specific one. So I'm going to drill it out a little bit just to kind of make it a little bit bigger for so my dial would actually fit. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and solder it from both sides because I just drilled it out and the vias that were going through this hole are no longer there. I just want to make sure that both sides are actually connected uh, to the lead. 
I think in future versions of this board, I might make these diode holes a little bit larger to support this bigger diode. Next, we'll install these IC sockets. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and uh, insert the ICs directly into it. But I would like to have the ability to add and remove ICs while we're testing because, I mean, almost every single time there's at least one issue whenever uh, I assemble a computer, and there's always something going on. So just having the ability to uh, swap out ICs while testing is a big plus. So I'm going to use IC sockets in my case. Then we'll install the uh, the fuse on the fuse holder and we'll insert the fuse into the fuse holder just so we're sure that we're oriented the orienting these um, fuse holders the right way. Simple as that. All right, and then we'll do the capacitors. And the last step is to insert the ICs, but first we got to remove these. Uh, these little plates off the IC sockets, so let me go ahead and remove them and insert all the ICs in their positions. And there we have it, the board is finished. And I'll just kind of spot check, make sure that all the pins are in, uh, inserted into the, uh, the sockets, make sure none of them are bent. The right orientation, yeah, looks good. Looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do a test uh, of the traces here, and let's see. Actually, I'm I'm curious what the uh, what the manual states about the testing here. So at this time, carefully inspect both sides of the card for uh, solder shorts, and I, I sort of looked through it already but I'm gonna do it again uh, just to make sure but it, it looks pretty good on my side then it's, it says install the 3 8 amp uh, AG 8 AG fuse into F1 and let's use uh, this uh, testing procedure here to verify that we don't have any shorts where they shouldn't be so what we want to test for are is the resistance between certain um, traces here all right, so a meter between pins A and A A1 and A3 of the card connector. So A1 and A3. We have 946 ohms. It should be greater than 5 ohms, so we're, we're, we're pretty good there. And it actually says to do it both ways. Let's go ahead and do that. So 300, but that way we're pretty good there. All right, so that's that's pretty much it. If it's under 5 ohms, there's probably a short somewhere, and you might want to go back and double check all the traces to make sure that it, there are no solder bridges. Okay, so let's insert it into the uh, Selby computer and turn it on uh, for a smoke test. Again, we're not ready for uh, a, a full test of this board or any of the boards that we have assembled so far because we don't have enough boards to actually do a test but in the next video we'll be assembling the the memory board and that once we finish that board that actually will give us the ability to run some tests so let me go ahead and insert this into the fifth position okay pretty good and then I'll plug in my power supply that we assembled in a previous video just gonna move a little bit just because this wire is a little too short all right so we got it plugged in to the power supply let's go ahead and turn it on So the lights are on, 
that's good. And so far we're not seeing any smoke, so that's also good. The fuse is okay. I'm kind of looking down into this these boards here just to kind of look at the fuses and the fuses are intact, so I don't think any of the boards have caused the fuse to uh to break yet. Okay, so yeah, I think we're pretty good with this board. We finished it. We did a uh, sort of a quick resistance test to make sure that there, that there were no shorts on on the main uh, traces there, the rails, the five volt rail, and uh, and did a smoke test. And so far, so good. In the next video, we'll be assembling this board right here, which is the uh, the RAM board, or I guess one of the RAM boards. For now, we'll just assemble one of them, and maybe in the future, we have, uh, let's see, we have three more, maybe two more. I guess it depends on what you want to s install into this computer, but I'll probably do two more of these RAM boards. And we also have this ROM board, and of course, this is not a required board. Uh, we'll do this RAM board in the next video, and we'll be able to test this computer without this ROM board. But if we want to actually have some sort of pre-program, I, I guess, have the computer pre-programmed so we can uh, power it on, you can actually run certain programs, uh, whichever are loaded on the ROM chips here. We could do that. And just to, as a reminder, these boards, this whole set is actually available at calingshow.com if anybody's interested in building this Selby computer. And it also has some of the peripheral boards as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And let me just turn the power supply off because it is pretty loud. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and if you found it helpful or maybe useful in your case. Uh, we're going to have a couple of more videos coming up soon for this computer. And I have some other videos planned for uh, some other devices that are, that are coming up in the future. And I also have some pretty interesting vintage computers that I want to showcase uh, some computers from the 1960s, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.